Hello and welcome to Life Before the Internet. This morning we had a small technical difficulty, so this afternoon I have the privilege of welcoming Sergeant Lee back for a follow-up interview. Good afternoon. Thank you for, for coming here today. My um, pleasure. So Sergeant, earlier we were talking and, we, and you, you told me about how much time you spent outdoors exploring and that kind of thing. Can you tell me a little more about that? What was a typical adventure for you? Typical adventure was just being outside every day. Uh, we would uh, we didn't have the social media <clears throat> or the games that are now like PlayStation, Nintendo. So we have to go outside and we would make our own games. We um, every day we're active in some type of sport, whether it be football, basketball, running, or just cycling. But we were always outside doing some kind of adventure. Always outside. And you mentioned you made up some games while you're at it too. Played the basic games, hide and seek. <laughs> we would uh, we you know wreck the sport games. Uh, we would um, go out into the. We had big fields with you know lots of trees, so we'd make our own trails and tree houses and go fishing. So we were just definitely always outside doing something. Anything with shoes, possibly? <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to talk about that. <laughs> but no, we did you know little mischievous things like uh, egging each other and. You know, but it all all simple, um, mischievous fun. Nothing uh, dangerous. <laughs> Nothing that frightening. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. And I'm guessing you also played with some toys, right? What kinds of toys do you remember growing up with? Ah, uh, we had things like uh, Gumby. Gumby. <laughs> we had yeah. Yo, you never heard about Gumby? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was a play character. Uh, trains, uh, bicycles, uh, leg not Legos, but. Um, Wooden uh, building blocks, Lincoln logs. You know, Lincoln logs. Thank you. Uh, we'd play games like checkers, Monopoly. You know, those are the kind of games we played back in the day. And yeah, Monopoly's still around today. Still, still around. Super popular. <laughs> you said that you would also tinker with your toys and take them apart. Oh, I would take any type of toy I had that was electrical uh, back then. You know, like the electrical cars, trains. I'd always take them apart, drive my parents crazy. As soon as they'd buy it. I play with it a little bit, then I take it apart. I try to put it together, and I wasn't very successful back then. <laughs> what was your, I guess, like logic behind taking out? Uh, to get to the uh, electric motor and play with it with the battery. You know, <laughs> just watching the motors play. <laughs> that was your idea yeah, of fun. That was my idea of fun. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> um, and you think that all the tinkering and exploring kind of uh, shaped you to, you know, who you are today? Well, it gave me a curiosity. When I was in the military, my job was an aircraft mechanic. So, you know, that kind of, you know, kept my curiosity going with tinkering and fixing, putting things, uh, taking them apart and putting them back together. Yeah, the fun I, I part about the Air Force was putting planes back together and watching them fly. I can see where, where that, that plays. <laughs> um, also, earlier, Sanchez and I took a listen to that song you mentioned, Grooving. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was it was really fun to listen to, and I can see why it brought you, I guess, happy memories. Mm -hmm. when, when you listen to that song, what do you typically think of? Uh, it takes me back simpler times, you know, uh, grooving on a Sunday afternoon. Sundays uh, would normally reserve for church, but after church, you know, our friends would get together, picnics, we'd have uh, just fun times together, whether it be family with friends, so it was just a... So when I'm it takes me back to the happy, simple part of my life. What other songs um, do you remember listening to? Oh goodness, there's so many. Um, gosh, favorite artists, Aretha Franklin, uh, James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone. I can go on and on and on. <laughs> but back in the, you know, that, that's back um, when music was simple and you could listen to it around everybody. <laughs> Pretty now the music out, you got to be very careful what you listen to and who's around you. Where was your, I guess, main source of music? Was it always like the radio? You said oh. you had Walkmans. No, back then all we had was the radio. You know, the radio we had back in San Antonio, it was K uh, K A S P, and I could remember to this day it would go off every day at six o'clock. <laughs> and so, would you, what, what was the? Um, You'd be listening to it in the kitchen or before school or what was it? Wherever we could. <laughs> Wherever we could. <laughs> that was our only source of music. We didn't have all the uh, media, uh, music streaming like we do today. You can listen to music um, anywhere. Telephone, car, computer, <laughs> iPad, iPhone, watches. <laughs> anything. Please. Anything. They, they, back then we were just, all we had was the transistor radios. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is better now that we have all this... Um, 
I guess, um, selectivity and choices that we can make with our music or, or in general, just um, we have everything available to us now. It's not very, you have to go, go out there and, you know, you listen to what's, what, what's, what's on the radio, nothing else, that kind of thing. Well, it helps broaden your broaden you because now you know you can listen to music anywhere from around the world instantaneously. You know, back then you you know you were limited to what you would listen to. Now you know, if I want to listen to uh, music from any continent, all I got to do is talk to my Spotify or my Pandora, and there it is. So it, it kind of you know I guess it uh, helps bring cultures together. Right. Mm-hmm. And just like earlier, you were showing me, um, you know, that that song and some other artists that I could follow. It's just um, it's interesting to look back and think about those things. Mm-hmm. And in regards to school, um, how about um, what was you as an educator now? How do you see like the the, the generational gap between your your generation, you know, growing up, going to school, and ours today? Well, a lot of differences. Back in the day when I was going to school any uh, infractions, any problems, not only did you get spanked at school, but as soon as you got home you got spanked. (laughs) So a lot of the infractions that we might see today, they wouldn't happen if they did. They would only happen once because you know what the the outcome would be instantaneous. (laughs) And so we don't have that anymore, you know, but I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's just how it was. (laughs) Right. You know, so things were a little bit different. Um, Now with... um, the social media and our uh, quick access to information, I think, you know, students today are, are they have the opportunity of being a lot uh, more educated quicker because anything that you want to find out, it's at your fingertips or your lip tips because all you have to do is speak into your phone or whatever, ask the question, and Google will answer. Back when I was growing up, all we had was the dictionary, the encyclopedia, and the library where you had to go to a card index and actually find the book. <laughs> so this is a whole lot it's whole all, different ball game. Whole different ball game, you know, so but information now is there, you know, at your fingertips. It's quick. You know, there's um uh, you know, the the searching part is a lot easier now. A happy memory that you have that you still hold on to even though I guess times have changed pretty much. So is there a memory that you still think about every now and then and just, you know, be happy oh, about it. Back when I was growing up, and like especially in the 70s, was the disco era when everybody would just go dancing for fun. <laughs> I miss the disco. You, you actually went to the disco? <laughs> oh, disco. Gosh, um, well, in my younger days, I was a big dancer, so I used to, I used to win... I, used to, I can't count how many disco, you know, contests I won back in the day. I was a big dancer, but so I love disco, so... I don't think many of your students would have believed that, you think? It's maybe. okay. I've, I've got the uh, the trophies and the newspaper articles to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they wouldn't. <laughs> what, what was the scene like there? Like, you know, just Everybody just out having a good time. You know, now, you know, um, with the climate, things are so, you know, kind of shaky. You know, sometimes you're afraid to go to places because you don't know what's going to happen. But back then... You know, everybody would just go out and have a good time. You know, every, you know that was the main purpose. We're going out to have a good time and socialize, meet new people, and go home and start the day all over again. Right. And is there any other, I guess, maybe fact about you that you think your students would find hard to believe? Oh, let me see. A fact about me. Mm, that's a hard one. I really can't think of one right now. <laughs> no, so that's all right. No, mm-hmm. I think I think the disco dancing days is yeah, yeah disco. A surprise. And I was a big roller skater. I used to love to. I still love to roller skate. Mm-hmm. I still roller skate. So that was uh, something else that I do quite a bit. And you said you rode your bike a lot too, right? Oh yes, all the time. Still do. <laughs> really, <laughs> love to cycle. But that was our mode of transportation. You know, wherever we had to go on a long distance, we'd hop on the bikes and go. And what was communication like? Because now it's like. You text each other minutes before you're going to meet now it's oh only the um, our our line of communication was the telephone which was normally in the kitchen so any conversations you know everybody could hear your conversation because there was the only the one phone <laughs> <laughs> so that was it so you know it's not the um, mobile uh, technology that we have now where you can receive or take or get a conversation or a uh, phone call anywhere we were limited to the kitchen or the the uh, 10 cents pay phone <laughs> right mm-hmm. And to talk, to finish this um, interview, 
is there a, I guess a piece of advice that you might give to to uh, students here at EPHS uh, in regards to I guess living life to your fullest because things are different but there's some advice that still stands the test of time. Well I think the advice that I would give is taking your education seriously and one thing that I didn't realize when I was growing up is how important your education is and the decision making factor. You know, the better educated you are, the better decisions you can make. So many of our um, downfalls are making poor decisions. And a lot of times we make poor decisions because we're not educated in certain facts of our lives. So it's very important to, you know, take your education serious, uh, be curious, and, you know, enjoy your life, but get that education. I'll take. I'll, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Uh, again, I want to thank you for taking the time to revisit the studio. Not after, a problem. After a little mishap over there, but I'm glad you could come back. So. I am, and I'm, you know, this is a beautiful studio. I hope uh, I get to come back again. No, thank you very much. <laughs> Hopefully for the right reasons. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> but, but, thank, but thank you so much, and uh, this is it. <laughs> Have a great you. day, and keep up the good work, everybody. Thank you. All right. At this time, we would like to thank everyone who made this production possible. Our audio video teacher, Mr. Sanchez, our CTV department and director, Ms. Castillon, as well as all of our listeners. I would also like to especially thank Rodrigo Vega and Aurelia Zamora. They're the ones who make it happen. This was KEPR 2020 and Around the Globe, High School Powered Radio. Just a couple of days ago, it was Veterans Day, and we would like to take the time to thank Sergeant Lee for his service, as well as all the other servicemen and women here on campus. Thank you for your service.